Okay, so now it's recording. All right, people are popping in. And popping out. <laughs> one attendee and there's attendee Bridget do you want me to let her in oh, I was doing that now okay 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 is that part I can do so I'm just glad we get to see who Amber Taylor is after getting <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> and all of my full Partial remote learning at home with the kids glory. <laughs> yep. I, know, I just right. got an email from you today about the election thing. About no, election. no, that wouldn't be me. That would have been somebody oh. else. No, I thought it was you. Oh, no. There is, I think there's another Amber now up at Town Hall. So oh, okay. we're starting to populate. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get the uh, agenda to show up here. Mm -hmm. Let's try again. Okay, Henry, is this pretty much everybody you're expecting? Um, let me see. I'm on the trying to share the screen, so I yeah. no longer know who's here. Um, there's a couple more people, I think, but um, they should be able to join and I can let them in pretty easily. Okay. Um, okay, there's another attendee. All right, so what I'll do is I will just um, make you the host and I will exit out and you guys have a fabulous meeting. Great, thank you. Thank you. I don't know how I get this. There we go. Hey, Julian, you're here. Hey, Henry. How's it going? Good. Bridget, are you on the phone or can you? Uh... No, this is my mom's computer, so it logs in weird. Okay, what's her name? My mom's name is Bridget. She's not in the meeting. Okay, I, got, I get it. Okay. Yeah, you got it. I lost. Uh... Because I'm sharing the screen, which I, I shouldn't do. I lost all the. Okay. Um, all the controls have disappeared. It should be there somewhere if you hover your mouse around near the bottom. Oh, um, no. Also, if you hit escape so that you're not in full screen mode, then it's easier to see the controls. Well, I'm not in full screen mode and I tried sharing. Can you guys see the agenda? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've lost the agenda and there we go. Uh, okay, that's so weird. I, I'm going to get rid of the agenda. There we go. I got these things at the top, but it's, there's no, okay. It's being recorded, so. Share, maybe that won't work. Okay, there we go. I stopped the sharing, that's why I lost everything. Okay, so we have three attendees. I'm gonna, oops, I just left. Oh. Sorry guys, I'll be there. Okay, so we have three attendees who are Gina, remote to panelist, Marion, 
move the panelist and Rana. Okay, there we go. So somebody else wants to keep track, Shoshana, maybe you could do that of, if there's more attendees that show up, promote them to panelists. Or Sarah. How do I do that? I don't know how to do that. Is there like some sort of thing I should be able to see on the screen that shows people show up or something? Maybe you're not co-host, maybe you can't do, maybe I have to do it. All right, uh, should we get started? I'm gonna have to read an official thing first. Is Alan coming? I think so, yeah. I believe he's here. He's here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Oh, great, okay. Um, I thought she sent me the thing, but maybe she didn't. Okay, so I can't read the official thing. It says basically, um, pursuant to state law, we're meeting on Zoom and blah, blah, blah. So everyone knows how to do the Zoom things and everybody seems to be here. So um, I will try sharing the agenda again. Nope, not there, okay, hold on. And then we'll get started. You guys see it? Yep. Is Becky here? I can't see everybody. Becky's not coming. So oh, Gordon, good. you're the secretary. Gordon's doing right? minutes. Okay. Right. And there will be a transcript. The meeting's being recorded, so there'll be a transcript that might help you. I'll try to get you that link as soon as it happens. Well, welcome everybody. How are you all? Hanging in. Invigorated by a great tree planting on Saturday. How's that? <laughs> Boy, you said the right thing. Yeah. Anybody else? I, I second. All right. Does everyone know Raina? Was that the planting and was that a meeting in person a year or so ago, maybe? you want to introduce yourself briefly before we go on? Hello, everybody. My name is Rana, and I'm happy to be able to join you uh, via Zoom. And um, I'm a longtime resident of Amherst. And I, many, many years ago, I went the, through the tree steward training, um, and I wanted to join this community for a long time. But um, my work commitments did not allow me to make it in time, but luckily it's all ready. Thank you. We're glad you're here now and we appreciated your help on Saturday. Yeah. And I think everybody knows everyone else. So um, you all have your names on your, mm -hmm. probably be good if you showed your names on your thing. Hen Henry, can I add that a lot of people saw us on Saturday and then I was planting all that sod on Sunday, still a lot more to do, but people came by, they, they were just really pleased to have seen us and they asked questions about the shade tree. And I have a very picky neighbor who told me, gosh, this is gonna really help the neighborhood. Um, but mm -hmm. people were very pleased and talked about how much they saw of us and of the trees on the street. We got lots of good press for the the group. Good. Thank you all. That's great. All right, so let's get into the agenda, which I can't see, even though you guys can see. So let me. It's weird that you can't see it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how to see it. All right, whatever. Well, what's next on the agenda? Someone else can read it to me. Announcements and public comments. Yeah. Although that did we just do that actually? <laughs> we sort of did that. Yeah. All right. And then there's hearings. There's no hearings today, Alan. Other. No hearings that I'm aware of. Okay. 
All right, and then there's approval of September minutes, volunteer hours. Okay, so uh, we count hours, for those of you who don't know, um, and we record them for our Tree City USA uh, application. So if we have lots of volunteer hours, that helps. So you guys want to give me your hours while we're here? Shauna. Um, let's say six hours. Okay, Sarah. Four. Julian? Six. Gordon? Uh, just three for me. Okay. Gina? No, you're muted. You're muted. So Four. the hours for the meeting and for the planting and the other work you did. Right, so three at the planting, one for the meeting. Okay. Uh, Marion? So three what, what, Three for planting, another planting. That I was okay. at. They weren't included before? No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Rana? Sorry, I called you Rana before. Rana. Okay. Um, I think I was there for two and a half hours for the planting, and I don't know how long is this meeting. Okay. And Bennett? Seven. Okay. And then I'll have to figure out my hours. It'll probably be about 12. So, okay. Oh, yeah. And Arwen would be um, three. Right. I always, um, I've never counted Arwen's hours, actually. <laughs> right. Okay, um, and then has everyone read the minutes? Are there any corrections to the minutes from September? Raise your hand if you read the minutes. I don't think I got the minutes. They went out to everyone in an email, at least all the official members. <laughs> I try I, to send it to everybody. I'm feeling like I didn't, I don't know, was it it's like so long ago that I read it and then I forgot about it that I read it? And could be. Because I did read minutes like a while ago, like a long time ago. <laughs> I think you did send them out like a week and a half ago or something. It, it definitely made me wonder if the meeting was coming up quicker than I thought. Yeah, so I thought the meeting was like last Wednesday yeah. for some reason. <laughs> and then I tried to log in and it was like, no, this meeting isn't happening right now. OK. So, uh, Anybody have comments about the minutes or should we approve them or should we go back to the drawing board and you guys should read them again and approve them at the next meeting? I, I know I've read whatever you sent and I didn't have any problems with it. So I'll assume that I'm just having pandemic time stretchingness. And <laughs> Want to just reason. revisit the question at the end of the meeting? Maybe we can scan it in the meantime. Well, I don't want people taking time out of the meeting to read the minutes. The idea is if we read the minutes, get corrections before the meeting, and then we can just rubber stamp it and it doesn't take a lot of agenda time. That's my goal. So let's postpone it for now. And next month, let's try to get September and October minutes all ready ahead of time. And when we get here, you know that uh, we're ready to approve. Sound good? Sounds great. Sounds Bye, good. Hi, OK. So I'm going to stop sharing because I can't do the other controls. So. Um, And then I can look at that separately. All right. So is anybody, nobody's in the attendee list, so that's good. All right. Uh, now I can see the minutes. Okay. So committee reports, the chair's report, then the tree warden, and the treasurer. And I have a few things for you. Um, after I left the planting, I drove down to Glendale Street, where this guy really wants us to plant trees in front of his son's new house. And I looked at that, and I met his neighbor the son's new neighbor, and uh, they want trees also. And I thought there's a few other spots, and I thought maybe Glendale Road, the part closest to 116, would be a nice location for a spring. We can talk about that when we talk about second Saturday plantings. Um, 
I've been in contact with somebody from the Brook who contacted Alan. And then I've spoken to a few people at the Brook. I went down there. That's one of the apartment complexes off of East Hadley Road that we talked about trying to get trees in. And they're private roads. So I'm a little confused as to how to move on with that. But we can talk about that a little later. Um, I also put a call onto the boulders, but did not hear back from them. And I have a low battery, so I'm going to go charge, plug in my computer. Um, the only other thing I have is uh, I went up to the nursery, the future nursery with Marion, and we looked at the land. Marion, do you want to talk about that while I get my power cord? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so there, there are various options in a field that I have that's not being used for anything but somebody's growing tomatoes there, but it's the rest of it has ample space. It's somewhat, somewhat wet in the spring, in the, in the late spring, it still isn't that, that dry, but I think, you know, it does dry out in, in the course of the spring and a lot of trees are growing fine there. So I think it, I'd love to have it happen there. If you want to have it happen there, I think it'll be great. I just have to add that, um, can you hear me now? You can? Yes. Okay. A little later I was, it was really pouring rain when, when we were done. And a little later I was inside and suddenly my dog got absolutely intensely excited and was trying to climb up the French door to, to go outside. And I looked out and there was a moose walking wow. through the field. So that was my big excitement for today. <laughs> of a teenage moose, but pretty big. <laughs> Just the same, pretty big. And then I was gonna get my camera, which was upstairs and I missed it. Couldn't get back in time. What part of town are you in? This is Amherst, North Amherst. Oh, Market oh, Hill oh. Road. Yeah, so it was right uh, on the edge of the woods that goes down to the uh, Fishman. Wow. So there's a lot of stuff happening down there that we never see. Occasionally, somebody comes up. It might be a bear. It's usually turkeys. Deer at night, you know, it's very, very well traveled. Well, I'm mad because I haven't seen a moose in 13 years of living here. Oh. So I don't want to hear about your moose stories. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you celebrating with me, Ben? Come on. <laughs> You're right. I'm celebrating with you, Mary. You don't have to believe me because there's no picture to prove it. <laughs> but it was Not real. Not necessarily a good thing that you're seeing moose because if we plant trees here, the moose will uh, eat tall trees. Well, I've never seen a moose, a moose <laughs> or, or since. So I think that there, they it'll do be wander fun. quite widely, I believe. So yeah. Real. Yeah. It could have just been passing through. There will have to be some fencing around them, though, because they, the deer are browsing. But, you know, maybe we can find people with old fencing. Just need more stakes. So there's some money involved, unless you had stakes. In the I have a roll of fence if you want it. Do you? Okay. Does anybody have stakes that are at least four feet tall? I might, I might actually. My parents um, recently put a fence around the, an area for their dogs that's like, like real chain link fence. Mm -hmm. And I think they have like some extra actual fence and some extra poles. I'm not sure how much I can, I can find out. Chain link this is? Yeah. That's it's like regular, like, like you would see around a, like a school or something like that. Wow. I don't know if I could handle that, that's all. Okay, well, we could use the poles if you didn't want the chain link. Yeah, I won't say no. <laughs> Maybe in my neighborhood association, I could put post something about stakes and fencing needed. Uh, Marion, there's also this website, I, I'm on it, it's called Buy Nothing Amherst. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, yes. you know, that one, people are giving things away, but I've also seen people write in search of. Yeah. yeah, I'm on that group. I I use that group all the time to get rid of all my crap. Yeah, I just got rid of something I wish I hadn't. I'm like, ah, if you're pre-gifting <laughs> it, remember me. <laughs> um, I want to ask Alan a question. Um, do you think the fact that the field is pretty wet 
will that be a problem for the nursery? Um, it will be if we um, want to dig the trees in the springtime. We can't. It's too wet to dig. Um, I mean, that's usually when we're going to be digging them is in the springtime. Mm -hmm. Like what? How early? Preferably before they leaf out. Yeah. So. Well, I think maybe, maybe we can put them in that, not in the place that was too wet. I think that'd be. Possible. A lot of trees are happily growing there. You know, yeah. somebody planted a lot of trees and they're very happy. It would be nice for not having to water them a lot. Mm hmm. Yeah. That was one question that came up. Uh, if I were to go away, since I'm, I'm just here and there's no strong man anymore to help me do that kind of thing, could I call on members of the committee to come up and water if I go away? Is that something that people could see doing? I mean, I only go away, you know, once or twice a summer for a week. Come on, I'd come up. Yeah, I could too. I'm not too far. I'll just, I'll send out an email and I have to get more hose. I, I have quite a few hundred feet of hose, but it's nice to have something that's already just in place. So I could try for that on the, on the buy nothing site. I have 25 feet of old hose that I don't need anymore if you want. Okay, I just, it has to be pretty sturdy hose, that's all. If it has a leak, I don't want it. <laughs> okay. You can buy hose too. What? It, you, the committee you can, can buy, buy hose. hose too. The question is, um, if the site's not going to work because we can't dig the trees in the spring. So you have drier spots that you didn't show me today. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I'd have to go inspect it. When, when are you going to plant them? Soon? We're hoping to do a November um, work day to get the trees started. Yeah, I think you should trust that it will be possible and good. I really do. I'm not just saying it. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk to um, my tomato growing person and see what he thinks. Okay. So should we plan that? Alan? Okay. Yeah. Are we going to do that as our second Saturday planting experience? Well, that's an idea. November, yeah. Unless we want to go a week earlier because it's starting to get cold in November. It does. Well, we haven't ordered the trees yet, so we have to see if they're available on bare root <laughs> um, and can get them. Okay. You want mm. me to call Amherst Nursery to do that? Or are you going to do that? I can talk to John. All right, so I'd say let's move ahead and um, maybe just hold off on the date, figure second Saturday for now, and see if we can get the trees in time. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, next on the agenda is the tree warden's report. Um, they're going to be uh, hopefully closing uh, West Pomeroy uh, for a waterline project this week. So we hope to get on there with the tree crew while it's closed and do, you know, crown lifting and removal of dead trees uh, while the road is closed. It's a very narrow, very fast road that is very difficult to work on when it's open to the general public. So um, we'll start that on Thursday, hopefully. Um, got four more trees going on East Hadley Road. Um, well, closer towards the Hadley line, uh, four linden trees going in there. So that's helped to continue that planting we did. Uh, we were able to get some funds to uh, rent a crane from Northeast Crane, Northeast Tree Service. Um, so their operator and a climber uh, helped us remove, you know, 130 foot dead white pine that had been struck by lightning twice. Um, so without doing any damage to the cemetery, that was a big help and a big time saver for us. Um, let's see. Well, obviously the big event this past week was the storm, the windstorm, which lasted all of five minutes and caused uh, 
extensive damage, mostly in North Amherst, central and North Amherst. Um, yeah. We had three town trees that actually failed. Um, there were probably, you know, seven significant trees that failed around town and that closed roads, you yeah. know, for more than 12 hours. Um, some of those roads, um, excuse me, um, that closed roads for upwards of 12 hours. And then there was um, another five, ro three roads that stayed closed for, you know, over 12 hours, almost 24 hours because Eversource and the cable and um, Verizon weren't able to get their lines out of the road. So the road stayed closed due to that, not because we couldn't get the tree damage taken care of, <clears throat> but the fact that the trees were either wrapped up in their, their infrastructure or the infrastructure was still physically in the road and nobody could touch it. So, um, but uh, we'll be probably spending some time this week um, cleaning up a few of those areas now that the wires are out of the way and going around and cleaning up odds and ends that people have called in since, since the storm that need to be taken care of. So. Other than that, uh, DPW is updating its web page, including the Tree and Grounds web page, which um, really hasn't been updated probably for eight years, seven years maybe. Um, so we'll be going through that process of uh, getting rid of old links and updating it and trying to make it more functional um, for users. That's pretty much it. Do you want some help with the planting on East Hadley Road? I think we'll do it. It's, uh, I have uh, some time with my staff to do it and it's uh, four trees. We should be able to get it done, but thank you. Okay. Anybody have questions for Alan? All right, Sarah, our new treasurer, do you wanna check on the balance and that stuff? I had a question. Oh, go ahead, Julie. Sorry. Um, how's Nani doing? She hasn't been in our meetings recently. Yeah, yeah I I saw her. Uh, we went on like a little tree adventure and we had fun. And then she, a couple days ago, dropped off um, all the stuff that she had for the tree committee, like some like cards and um, stationery and envelopes and stuff with the tree committee's information on it. That I guess that should go to the next treasurer, perhaps. So is she no longer a member of the committee? Yeah, she, um, she her term limit came up. Oh, okay. Thanks for updating me. That's a good transition. Um, I need treasurer orientation so that I know how to do that job. I would suggest you call Nani, but um, she didn't really do all that much. So um, I think the basic thing is once a month, you just check the balance by calling town hall. And if there's less or more money, try to figure out where the money came from. And then you have to sign off when we do purchases is a form that the chair and the treasurer both sign. And then maybe it's holding on to the stationary, which is mostly cards we send out as thank yous for gifts and things like that. Sure. Um, so I didn't call town hall because I didn't understand it. it was that simple as making a phone call and I will update you next month. Okay. Yeah, the person you want to talk to is Holly. Okay. Anyway, we need to, um, unless you already sent it, um, and I don't remember getting it. We need that form for the t-shirts to purchase the t-shirts. I thought we the, signed the form a while ago and I gave it to you. I don't, I don't remember getting it. Um, that doesn't mean you didn't give it to me, but how long ago would that have been? Uh, I don't remember. Um, quite, quite a few months, I remember. We, when we voted on it, it was quite a while ago. Okay, so then I have it and I'll... Uh, and I'll do you have the one for the placards? 
I have a, I have a request for the t-shirts. We have the quote for the t-shirts. I haven't gotten anything for the placards yet. You have a form for the placards. Oh, I don't know. You, uh, Shady Committee has the forms. No, I know. I filled out a form for both of those things, got Nani's signature and gave them to you quite a while ago. Okay, then I guess I have to look through my records and see because I, I don't remember getting them, so I apologize. I'll look okay. If not, I have more forms. I can sign them and then get them over to Sarah to sign. Okay. So, but you got the request for the t-shirts already? I, I have the quote. The vendor is a currently a town vendor. So that makes that simplifies the process. And um, I just need the form. And, okay. Uh, well, yeah, let me know like right away if you can't find okay. it. I'll get a new form over to Sarah. I'll check tomorrow for it. Okay. Great. Um, all right, so then next is uh, Second Saturdays. We did good considering we started late, but we had two good plantings this year and I'm looking forward to doing the new nursery. Um, and then, you know, figure out locations for 2021. We have a few that, are on, that we've thought about that we haven't got to. And then I'm suggesting Glendale Road and possibly if we can do something at the Brook and the Boulders. Um, Alan, I'm not sure how, since the Brook and Boulders are private roads, I'm not sure how we go about that. I know we did plant in uh, Colonial Village, which is also private. The trees that we used at Colonial Village were donated trees uh, from Hadley Garden Center. That's why it's kind of an odd mixture of trees. Um, so what I would recommend is, um, you know, if, if they're interested in doing something that the uh, the association, the condo association or whatever it is, would purchase the trees and the committee could provide the labor, which is actually, you know, as one of the biggest costs of <laughs> planting trees is actually the labor, um, not the tree. So that would work in favor and it would be a partnership and it would show that they're invested in um, the trees and making sure they live. Yeah, I spoke to them and, um... You know, there's a few people who live there. One is a tenant, the others are owners, but, um, and only the owners have a say on the board. But they were not sure the board would agree or have the money to be able to afford the trees. So I told them we would provide the labor. I said exactly that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they would have to um, come up with the, the money for the trees or the tenant, or the committee would need to find some somebody to donate the money because I can't use town funds to to plant on private properties. Like you that. know for getting trees from Hadley Garden set of this year? No, I don't think we are. Or from whatever it's called now. Yeah. Gardener's Supply. They have not reached out to us. So. That might be something one of us could do is reach out to them and say, hey, you guys used to donate trees that you couldn't sell at the end of the year. Are you still interested in doing that? I could do that. Okay. So I don't know who's in charge at, you know, Garden of Supply, but you had the Garden Center did donate trees. So. Okay. Has yeah. Wanzik ever donated? What's that? Has Wanzik Nurseries ever donated? Not that I'm aware of. They grow them, most of their trees. So how the Garden Center buys theirs in and they have no place to really overwinter them. So they want to get rid of them. Well, we could check with Dan Zomack, who we could. he used to work at Headley Garden Center, now he's at Wanzik. <laughs> that's what I, that, that was the connection I was making. Yeah, I think that, uh, let me uh, take it as, I know Dan, I will reach out to him and see what he, if he can do anything. Great, thanks, that's great. And then we can use those trees for things like this where it's on private property. Yep. Uh, sorry, what was Dan's name? Dan? His last name is Z. Sorry? Z I O M E K. Oh, Zomek. Same Zomek. Okay. Yep. It's all over town. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah. I think he's also the bird call guy, right? Yep. 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 Okay. Well, that's good. Um, anyone have other ideas for 
locations for next year's plantings? I will say, the, um, I, I don't have a specific recommendation, but I will say that generally speaking, I, I asked a lot of people to come plant on Lincoln. Um, none of them came. About half of them said, why would I go plant trees on Lincoln? Um, no offense, Gina. It's just, a, <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a street that's known for, a, it's a very leafy, nice street. Um, it would have been easier for me to, I think, get people to go to, and I, I didn't do this in the previous planning, but I think if I had, people would have been, it would have been easier to get people to go to a place where you're like, ah, you know, this, it's not as, not the leafy, shady streets, lots more, you know, just kind of construction going on, lots of apartment buildings. That would have been the easier sell, I think. So my vote is for it's just um, places that are often overlooked, I would, I would say. One, one place that jumped out at me is in our neighborhood up here at the intersection of Pine and North Pleasant. Um, a big tree came down there so that that corner is fairly barren. I don't know, Henry, if you know what I'm talking about, by the Korean restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that area is uh, scheduled for redesign on the immediate corner. Um, so. Not a good time to plant, you know, directly in that area. Why is that? Because they're going to be tearing it all up. Oh, okay. That's I, always I, the problem. We wait I, till they plant, till they tear it up, and then it gets delayed, and then we find right. the plant, and then they do something different, and you know. Yeah. It's a bit of a challenge. Well, I, I, I'm kind of a, you know, pollinator tree plant um you know there's a passion in that zone and i i wanted to know what kind of trees in the pollinator line could be introduced into the the new collection of trees that we'll make available linden and basswood are good pollinator trees mm -hmm. they have to meet certain specs for that that make them not too delicate. Yeah, you want a tree that is, um, you know, resist, uh, hardy, drought tolerant, can grow in compacted gravelly soils. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. And salt tolerant, salt spray tolerant. Salt tolerant, yeah. So is it, is it, I just want to check and see if I really know this, that you, you are thinking about pollinator plants? When you when you plant trees, I mean they're not thought of as plants; they're trees, but there's still some really useful trees. Um, I do take it into consideration somewhat. I mean, most of my consideration is based on survivability, mm -hmm. and uh, not you know conflicting with the surrounding infrastructure. So mm -hmm. something that can grow in the available root zone, yeah, um, something that can grow without having to be, you know constantly uh, pruned severely mm -hmm. to avoid wires, yeah. buildings, roads, signs, street lights, pedestrians. Um, so. so if I don't want to be annoying, but I just want to That's be okay. sure that, I mean, if I, if I have an idea, would you, would you sort of give, give an opinion on it? I don't. Um, yeah. So if, I mean, if, if you suggested uh, a species that were, very, you know, beneficial to pollinators, I would definitely add, you know, those species if they're not already in my mix. Mm -hmm. And I could, you yeah. know, if, if their growing conditions meet the site conditions, then I could definitely cite them. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, we do think about that. And, you know, there's, most of the trees are actually beneficial to different pollinators. Some have more species of pollinators that are that they're suitable for, but others provide pollination for, you know, rarer, rarer right. bugs. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, you could plant oaks, which have a lot of pollinating habitat, but that wouldn't help, say, the rosy maple moth. You need a maple for that. So the right. diversity of planting and the other considerations, um, we generally plant native trees as much as we can. Yeah. It's also important. So we're, we're thinking about that, but in broader terms. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, anyone on the committee could definitely suggest, you know, 
the favorite tree or the most pollinated friendly tree or whatever to Alan or to the committee and we'll, we'll definitely consider it. Okay. Um, in terms of locations, Bennett and others, you know, drive around town and see a location that looks pretty sparse that you think would attract your friends to help plant, you know, that you would like to plant in. Um, and, and we could do that. A recommendation would help <laughs> from, from me, like you're right. Just go and find a place that seems suitable. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other comments about second Saturday plantings? All right, let's move over to the ordinance. Um, I'm sorry, I do. Um, Henry, are we going to do planting? Well, we'll find out from you if we're going to plant in November at Marion's for the nursery. We'll find out later. I, I know you all had to check to see if the trees were even going to be available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's put it on our calendar and then, you know, we can yeah, cancel it. Here's the time. Yeah. I, I had one other thought on that subject, which is it might be easiest to protect them from deer if we plant them in groups in the most favorable places. And like five, you could fence in five in that here and five there. Does that be too strange or could you see that? Because the deer is as, are as much of a problem as the... They'll be fairly close together anyways, because they're only going to be in the ground three years. Right, right. So we could do that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think um, the, the need for fencing is, is just is more of a threat than the water problem. Because the deer are very, very excited about the, the young, young trees. But all my... Since uh, Alan told me about the six-foot radius and you know, it worked like a charm, but I didn't know about that before. And I lost two chestnut trees. Not because of, that's actually, yeah, that someone what's, mowed them down. Hmm? What's the six foot, six foot radius thing? Oh, oh, fencing. Oh, fencing, okay. I'm not six, three feet all around, so six foot total. A diameter. <clears throat> Okay, should we move on? Sarah, placards. I went and visited the extra trees to increase the number of placards um, and I can turn those around. Uh, I have to put the data into iTree to get all the numbers to plug in for the flyer, but um, the ones that are done are done, and I believe we approved them. So once they're printed, Shoshana and I can coordinate time to go put them up. Okay, so right now I have eight final ones. Yep, and I've got um, a couple others that I went out and measured and I did, and I just need to put it into iTree to add to the bunch. Okay, so I'll wait for that and then um, I'll make sure Alan has the, the form filled out from us and then uh, I'll go order them at Amherst Copy, which is a vendor, so that's good. Great, I will, um, I'll get them to you by the end of this week so that we can get those up. Excellent, great. Anything else about the placards? Okay, well, actually what was next on the agenda and got mixed up is the ordinance, which is also Sarah's uh, ballywick. So go ahead. Um, yeah, so uh, I got comments um, from a couple of you and there's still time if anyone wants to read it and uh, send send in any comments. I think the biggest thing which a number of people brought up is just to clarify issues um, around approved removals and what the replacement um, or payout is going to be for that versus uh, an additional um, payout or replacement required for um, not approved removals. So I think we're just going to have to revisit that language to make sure it's really explicit and clear in the document itself. Um, if anyone has 
other ideas or specific wording or something, you know, concerns they want to bring up around that topic um, in more specifically, um, we could talk about it. Yeah, it didn't even occur to me when I was reading it that there should be a difference between like the fee and the fine, essentially, depending on, you know, how, how you cut down the tree. <laughs> Yeah, that, I think that that language is actually a, a really good way to kind of specify those two different um, actions. Um, and so so that's what we're, I think yeah. that's the, the thing to work out. Um, anybody else have anything they want to, to share about that? Or um, we could open it up to any other specific ideas and questions. I had one general question about the uh, requirement for a plan, site plan. I was wondering if, if somebody wants to remove a big tree on their property, I thought the wording was such that they would be required to have some kind of site plan. And would they need a plan just for removal? Or is the ordinance really just for like construction and projects that have plans? That's a good question. I don't think it was written to imply that you needed a removals plan just to take down trees. I think it's just approval. Um, and I, okay. I don't, and that, I mean, that seems to make sense to me. Obviously, if they would have a significant construction plan where they're going through like the zoning or the planning board then they're going to have a selective removals plan and that'll be something separate from this um i don't know what do you guys think should we i don't want to make and this is to one of the points that bennett raised when he sent in his comments was we don't want to make this too difficult um, so that there's a lot of pushback in getting it passed and also just as um, you know residents in Amherst and property owners um, homeowners we don't want to make this too much red tape too difficult for people to do it's it's really supposed to protect the trees it's not supposed to be more uh, unnecessary legislation so um, what do you guys think about about that point of having a, a plan or flagging or a way to have a specific demarcated approval. Um, how, any ideas or opinions? If the idea is that you don't have to have a plan for a removal, I just wonder if it's slight wording in that section, just, you know, or approval of the tree warden or something like that. I think of minor, or maybe I'm the only one who had that confusion, I don't know. but. It, it seems like a small change in the language where just some kind of approval um, is, is mentioned in a not non-dependent clause on the plan part. Um, might do it. I, mean, um, oh, I think I remember this cropping up before too, that we didn't want to have too much put on Alan's shoulders. Oh, right. Too. That I think that's probably where that originated. There should be a, you know, a tree preservation plan. You know, once someone, there's going to be some kind of application or notification and um, there's going to be a review process. Um, is it just going to be myself reviewing? Is this part of a larger project where they're already going in front of the planning board and they're already holding a scenic road hearing and mm -hmm. um you know we're we've been talking about uh individual trees um that you know haven't triggered multiple other things that will already be triggered in the town whether it's a curb cut permitting process or someone has a sewer line they need to replace um, uh, they're putting an addition on the house. It's in a historical district. Um, you know, uh, this, you know, whatever we, whatever gets created has to be merged into the larger kind of permitting process the town has. Um, and to make it so it's not overly burdensome on the, on the applicant. 
Is that something the ordinance that we're writing should say, or is that something that? You know, I think it should be discussed in the ordinance somewhere in there that you know, this is part of um, the process. Because right, it's already very confusing if you're a property owner and you want to do a project or you're a developer or you're a construction worker and you're trying to get a dig up a utility somewhere. Um, you know, there's essentially two avenues to go through. One is through DPW, one is through planning. Um, and they try to end up at the same place, but they trigger different things. Um, so we're adding another layer to trigger, you know, outside of uh, chapter 87 tree hearings and things like that. So, and I, I did have other, you know, thoughts I want the committee to think about the um, you know limiting the size of this to you know the downtown uh, area the either the bid area or maybe some of the historic areas in town and starting small um, and seeing how it works and then expanding out from there in the future if it's needed um, and the committee is going to need to work on a very professional and detailed um, presentation that's going to need to be given to a lot of different people and boards so that everybody can understand why we need this in town. Um, so there, um, we need a really, you know, uh, professional looking Essentially, a PowerPoint presentation with talking points and with the data that shows why this is needed um, so that it can move forward. I think that's a great point, Alan, and I'm happy to head up that presentation. Um, I could certainly use some help if anyone wants to um, just be like a sounding board or a partner, someone I can bounce ideas off of. It's always helpful just to just have a second pair of eyes on um, something that's gonna be public, like a presentation. Um, but I'm happy to get that started. Um, and I'd love to help with the presentation. I'm happy to help. Great, thanks, Bennett. Um, and and I think that, um, Alan, your other suggestion uh, to limit it to the, the bid district um, and focus on the downtown and kind of run that and see how it goes is a good idea. Um, anybody else? Yeah, um, I'm going to help with the presentation also. I'm thinking I'd rather not limit it to the downtown, but make the size of the trees really large so that um, there would be fewer trees and to be really a more clear reason. You know, like that tree on, on um, South, uh, Southeast Street, you know, that was a huge tree. You know, so people can really look at that and say, wow, that's really special, it's worth saving, that kind of thing. So that was the initial intention when this was written was to identify two distinct areas. And I don't think it came through in this, but the first, so first area is extending the, it's not an extension of the right of way zone, but it's creating a secondary right of way zone, out, you know, along the roadsides. Mm -hmm. So in that zone, and we could call it 20 feet, but it, you know that I think there was reference to some um, case studies that Ryan and AJ did to kind of figure that out. And it's it's not clear, but the initial intention <laughs> was to have a zone that's like 20 feet from the right of way, and in that zone, along all public ways, the DBH would be smaller because having street trees are beneficial for all these reasons. And in some areas where we don't have room for street trees, we would have a smaller definition of what's significant on private property in an effort to create more of a street tree kind of street. 
second area is anywhere that's on any private any private property then it would be quite a large dbh so that was the initial intention and i don't think it's particularly clear in reading this um, so we could definitely clarify that point or we could just make it more simple and not do any sort of right of way extended right of way planting and just have the this like henry like you were saying a larger dbh all private property and just keep it at that for now you know addendums possible but what do you guys think in terms of clarity should we try to divide it into those separate zones or well is the is the street tree zone already covered by another thing like because that's already a thing like we have to have our our like meetings about the ones that are on the side of the road so i feel like it's possible that that's already taken care of um but maybe it needs said again in this one just so that it's clear the difference between you know our street trees and people's backyard trees yeah so so and 20 inches seems big to me i don't know about everybody this, else but. this is in the section three definition of a significant tree trees within a 20 foot offset from the right of way so what we currently have tree hearings about are trees that are in the right of way and this is this is to, meant to like expand upon that upon expand 20 feet upon what we currently have under jurisdiction and then the second line item is only if they are farther than 20 feet from the public right of way then it is increased to 20 inches i think um you know and admittedly i haven't read the document sorry but would you have some kind of table in there because okay i'm thinking the right of way and i know alan explained it to me then i have to add 20 feet onto that and then we've got the 20 inches if it's in this spot or in this spot i don't know some kind of table where you could say with the definition and these are these sizes or something like that because at least my listening to you all now i'm trying to envision it and i can't yeah or maybe like a sample map yeah a cross section mm -hmm. Here's your road. Um, but maybe to, to kind of Henry's suggestion, do we want to even try to do that two different, two different DBH trigger sizes in two separate areas? Or do we want to just go with the simpler, larger DBH? It seemed like keeping it simple would be a big plus. Um, but I don't know what the other ramifications are. Are there any things like, I mean, if the town is, is, I guess, I guess when we're reading this, the one thing that came up in my mind a lot was um, uh, damage to trees and damaged trees. If a tree is damaged and somebody needs to take it down, is that do they have to go through this whole process or if the tree is damaged might they point to the town and say hey i couldn't touch this tree because it's a significant tree therefore hey town of amherst it's your liability the fact that the tree fell on my house or whatever it is so i don't know if those are significant concerns or not but um maybe those are already addressed elsewhere Uh, so that, I mean, that's certainly something that I was thinking about in terms of liability. We don't want anyone to not do their due diligence of assessing tree health and protecting their personal property um, and then blame the town. Um, Nani was originally helping me with this and she was quite adamant that all other avenues be explored as options before tree removal was granted um like any sort of of tree pruning or maintenance or anything else that could be done to prolong 
the life of a significant tree um, as opposed to just, oh, it's losing branches, so we need to cut it down. Um, so that is a little bit reflected in the attempt to try to preserve trees, if at all possible. Um, yeah, but it says clearly that if it's sick, it, would, it can come down without repercussion. Right. So, I mean, we didn't, I wanted to make sure that people weren't going to try to blame the town and obviously trees have a lifespan just like everything else and it's a much longer lifespan than we're used to thinking about but eventually they do get sick or or die or reach the end of their life and need to be managed uh, especially in an urban context so I don't know if you think there needs to be more kind of non-disclaimer legal information about that I imagine before it goes to um, be voted on by town or whatever, it'll probably have to go to the town lawyer, right? To get looked right. over? Yes. That's great, because I could certainly use help with that sort of legal language. So tell me what you all think. I'm sorry about background noise. Um, well, I like the idea of having it where in some districts, like downtown or historical districts, we could have a certain DBH and then a different one for outside of those districts and for the rest of the town, like what Henry was saying. Like maybe set one at 15 inches in historical districts or the downtown and then outside of those districts, it could be 20, 25. So Julian, I'm not sure if you had a chance to read it. We don't currently have it broken out by zoning. Um, and we did that kind of on purpose, um, just so that this isn't tied to zoning regulations and lives a little bit separately from that. The attempt was made to try to do right close to the street, all the private area um, and the, uh, the DBH minimum requirements were determined based on prior study. So what other towns um, in particular Northampton have done so that we could use them as an example. Um, you know, similar towns, similar place in the world, ecosystems. Yeah, um, I haven't read it, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, so we, I, that is something that we talked about and if that's something that other people want to see added, like even more specific requirements, um, I think in the end we determined, like with what um, Ryan and AJ were doing for their class requirements, they decided to not go with tying it to the zoning, but that's certainly something we could explore if we want to research that further. Yeah, thank you. Henry, you're muted. I was just saying, oh, I'm muted, as you said. <laughs> um, these are good questions, and we need to make decisions about them. Um, so let's just maybe do a show of hands right now of who favors the simpler one or who favors the separate. Well, who favors the area near the road, close to the right-of-way, to add that as a separate section? Raise your hand if you support that support the, the difference between near the road and, and people's backyards. Right, and that's how it, it is currently broken out. So support yeah, keeping that and, and clarifying it or um, simplifying it to just the larger DBH everywhere, I think is, is that, that's what you're getting at, Henry? Yeah, okay. So all in favor of having the area along the road protected, raise your hand. Me. Three. Definitely. We can't have people chopping down our trees that we just planted. <laughs> I, I, I only bristle, every time I look at this, I bristle at the significant trees are six inches in diameter by height. It just, that would, um, um, you know, on one hand, all trees are significant, but that one, uh, I would, 
if somebody asked, you know, if we presented this to the town council or somebody, they said, you mean a six inch tree is significant? Like when I think of significant trees, I think of, you know, ancient towering oaks and that sort of stuff. And that could just be my, you know, like I'm, this is, um, I, that, that one, I don't, it seems like a hard one to enforce. I, well, I, what I if we called it the, um, the street tree and, or street and significant tree ordinance. So it, it differentiates between right in the title of like these street trees are protected extra and the big guy in the backyard somewhere is also protected. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think the six inch is too restrictive also. Um, but then the trees don't grow as big here as they do in Louisiana. <laughs> but yeah, I would, I would, say maybe, I don't know, 16 or 18 inches for trees near the road and 30 or 36 inches for trees in your backyard. I mean, I would make it pretty high so there's not that many trees come under the thing. And those feel more significant to me, for sure. I mean, just making it, I mean, you know, and I don't know how this, Alan could say that, you know, um, I've, my guess is, Alan, you have a better, not like this could be super restrictive Compared to other towns, or I mean, Sarah, you actually compared this is compared to Northampton, so I, you know, I, I don't know how far afield we are of kind of norms. Um, uh, I just don't know. Shouldn't we be consistent with um, our our ordinance that we already have with our street trees, right? Like, because we already have like our parameters that we did like a couple years ago about the the DBH and when that kicks in. Yeah, the, um, the public shade tree, you know, law in Massachusetts um, brings in a lot of trees because it's, you know, anything from, uh, you know, uh, well, I think in our ordinance, we, for, for uh, reimbursement sake, we said six inches, I think. Um, for any kind of uh, removal and reimbursement. But uh, this is, you know, the title of this ordinance that we started out with, I think is a significant tree ordinance. Um, so we're trying to capture those trees which are large. Um, we need to define what a large tree is, a significant tree is. Um, we keep trying to um, bring in more and, and take you know, more oversight um, we need to stick to significant trees and pick a size. So we could look at Northampton, we could look at Springfield, um, you know, other communities that have significant tree ordinances. And uh, those are what will get, trigger the, uh, the ordinance. The Northampton's is 20 inches in diameter. I think Springfield's around there somewhere too. So. And I, that's where the 20 inches came from. Does Northampton have the, the setback uh, separate? You know, no. buffer from, oh, okay. Not that I, no, not, not under this document that I've reviewed. I don't know if they have some, if they broke it out separately into like two separate documents. Um, cause I didn't review their street tree, just the significant tree ordinance. It seems like we following other towns would be important. If people feel like we're going out on a limb in any way, it seems like we'd get more pushback. I'm Sorry. sorry very wrong analogy. Uh, yes, so that I, I mean, I didn't write this document, um, was given to us um, by the UMass students. Um, and I, in the first round of edits, I specifically asked them to use a lot of references and references that would be appropriate for Amherst. Um, so things that are local, sounds of it, towns of a similar size um, and similar geographic location. Um, so the, their 
is a list of references in an appendix of the draft, um, which I haven't read all of them. <laughs> um, but I did, I did specifically ask them when they were drafting this for Amherst to be a workable document that we needed to use a lot of references and basically, you know, not to propose anything that was too, too controversial um, or experimental, even if it was based in good research, um, a, you know, like scientific studies or something that's important, but that also it has to be based on uh, similar legislation so, so I, I asked, um, I put in that request in the initial drafting of this, but I didn't um, draft it myself. So I'm not sure how closely that has been followed. Um, and there's not specific references in the, the, that specific definition of a significant tree section. There are references to, um, the other data in other parts, but not in that specific part. So we could include more references there to substantiate our claims. Well, um, how should we proceed? I mean, I'd be happy to sit down, Sarah, and talk with you about it and work through those details and come up with a new draft to present to the committee or the committee can make a decision now. Uh, I mean, I definitely think it needs uh, some editing. Um, I'm happy to go through and do incorporate the, the edits everyone has sent in so far and the concerns we raised this evening. Um, and then I can send out another draft. Um, it would be really helpful, I think, to this effort if we did kind of a crowdsource editing, like if everyone took time to really read through this and get in there and do a hard edit with adding specific languages anywhere that it seems unclear, uh, whatever other information you feel is necessary uh, to really make this a well-researched and thoughtful document before we bring it to uh, you know any of the, anyone else in the town. Um, so I would, I'm happy to do like a, the next round of edits, but then I really think getting in there and, and just being very detailed and specific in reading through and, and commenting and editing even to, you know, like the choice of wording or, and all of that stuff that's, that's kind of been brought up, but really just to, to crowdsource it to our entire committee would be helpful, I think, in making this the best it could be. One thing I found when reading it was that it, it was hard to come up with, like I came up with a lot of questions, but they're, they're complicated answers. So I didn't feel right just like putting in, you know, Googling it and then sticking in my answer. Like it seemed like they all needed discussion. And, yeah, um, um, I'm just, because we meet so infrequently, that's what I was kind of hoping to address with crowdsourcing it. If it's yeah. a Google Doc and everyone can kind of answer, ask questions, answer questions, respond, um in in more of a real time as opposed to we wait a month and yeah. then everyone forgets what we're talking about oh, that sounds <laughs> good so we can put in comments back and forth. Yeah. so so if um good. i'm happy to do like the next round of, of of edits incorporating everything so far but i i think if we did more of a, of, of a natural crowdsource edit question answer and, and let it develop a little bit um with more eyes on it would hopefully get to get to some of those answers in a, in a way that's uh, more efficient. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. So Sarah, thanks. Um, I have a question. I'm used to working with SharePoint, like for work. So when you say crowdsourcing, is that you're putting it on some share drive and we all go in and you can see who's working on it at the same time? How, how does this work? I would just put it on a, on a Google doc and share it with everyone. Yeah. So we would be able to see Gina that, you're in the document when I'm in the document and I can see that you're make. I can see your edits as if okay. I'm kind of looking at as if it were. All right. So it's the same. For, I just haven't used it through Google. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's on the internet. So you don't have to have a specific software or anything. 
okay. I would be happy once, you know, like you have a lot of things and um, I would be happy. You probably need at some point, some people sit with you and just like go through it, you know, like, yes, no, not pertinent, you know, just boom, boom, boom. Otherwise I can imagine that you might just, you know, it, it could go on and on. So if you do decide at some point that you want some people just to be with you while you're going through all these comments, deciding which one's valid or whatever, I'd be happy to sit with you and maybe I'll just be cheering you on. But <laughs> I'd be happy to be there. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Good. So Sarah, why don't you get it out to us, the edits from today and that you've received so far. And everyone really, it's like, reading the minutes ahead of time. I know I've said this before, but people don't generally do stuff like that. So let's really support Sarah in this and support the note taker and things by reading the minutes so we can get all that stuff done timely. Yes, thumbs that up. That sounds good. Um, I'll send out the, up, the next draft um, and I would encourage everyone to, to ask questions. Uh, Gordon, to your point, I think even if all you have are questions, um, just putting them in will help us figure out where we need to cite references or something like that. Just um, if, if okay. any of us have questions, other people will have the same questions um, and, and probably things we haven't even thought of. So um, any sort of comments or, or questions, or even if it's not the answer um, or you don't know the answer would just be really helpful because then we can start to kind of plug the holes in to make this. Um, a really well researched uh, and meaningful document. So I'll send this out. Um, and then anytime you get to it, um, you know, during this time before next meeting would be great. I would love everyone's uh, continued feedback. So thanks. Thanks for everything so far. <laughs> oh, did, did you get my comments? I don't know if it sounds like maybe you didn't. I did. Um, I did. Okay, good. There was one thing that came to mind, which was that it seems to me the conservation, I was worried about another committee staking the claim on private property. And it sounds like the Com conservation committee already does this. And I was just wondering, is that, and I don't know if people, I guess that's something I could discuss in the document, but it's, it seemed, well, yeah, let's, let's, I'll, I'll put it in the Google Doc. We'll do it from there. We should move on now. Okay. Okay. Um, well, T-shirts is next on the agenda, but it sounds like we're all set. I gave uh, Shoshana the list of what I think we should order, and I'll just make sure Alan gets the, uh, the form signed by me and Sarah if he doesn't have it already. Um, web design, Bennett, are you starting to get in there, or have you... Yeah, I have. Um, I haven't heard back from, I sent a note to um, Sean um, Hannon, I think, at, at the town about asking basically what can we do? Are there guidelines for it? I haven't heard back from him. Um, I, I do have, given the time, it's um, probably not the right time to do it, but um, I've started to think about assuming that he, my guess is he's going to come back and say, well, you know, the, you don't radically reinvent this. You can change the menu items. You can change the number of menu items and you can change all content within those pieces. I've started to think about, well, what menu items should we have when you go to that page? Um, and I've, I have a draft of that, uh, which is really the architecture for whatever it is that we want to end up doing. And it's different than, it's not, you know, it's, it's different than what we currently have. Um, and so maybe that's, um, that's probably something I should share or I mean, I could present it at the next meeting or share it, um, you know, after we get off this call, um, just for feedback on what the, specifically what I would be looking for is, are these, you know, are we missing anything with these menu items? And is there anything here that shouldn't be here? Um, so for just by way of example, and I'll shut up, um, I, I added a make a donation tab um, and I removed the request a tree tab because I understood that, you know, there was a time when we had a lot of trees to give away and, and that's no longer the case. Um, and for the make a donation, you know, it's not a big part of what we do or how we get our funding, but maybe it, you know, people might want to give for that. So things like that, you know, those are kind of, 
um, those are the kind of questions that kind of go into um, how we might rethink what we've done on Lyme. So, um, so yeah, maybe with nine minutes left, I should either share it after this meeting or probably share it in advance of the next meeting and then spend 15 minutes actually talking about it. Yeah, share it as soon as possible. And then okay. like Sarah's doing with the document, we can okay. get some between meetings and get information back to you. Okay, so something great. Something to present. Great, thank you. All right, um, we talked about a junior tree committee and then Julian found out that you don't have to, um, there's no age limit to join our committee. So I encouraged him to apply to join the committee himself and Arwen could do that unless people think a junior tree committee would be useful in itself, which it might. But. Well, I, I'll read you exactly what he wrote to me, um, Paul Bachelman, um, so that it's in the minutes so we have this documented. <laughs> <laughs> From Paul Bachelman's office, it says, there is no formal subgroup like this, when I was asking about a junior, developing a junior group, they can join as members. There is no minimum age. Or they can continue as valued volunteers. Paul Bockelman, town manager, town of Amherst. Thank you, Shoshona. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember you told me about that earlier, so I really appreciate it. But um, after learning that information, I guess I see the need I can still see why there might be a need for a junior tree committee. However, I think it might be more effective, just in my personal opinion, to do an outreach type of thing where we say, here's the open seats and try to advertise that, whether that's in the schools, I can reach out about it on my friend group and see if we can get some members of well well, that's you. You're <laughs> the committee who are younger. And I, I already filled out my community action form um, just last night. And I'm hoping Arwen can join. And that would fill all the seats that we have. So, yeah. Yeah, I wrote back to Paul, thanking him for his response, and then told him that you were to expect your, your uh, bid. Awesome. The seat there, and said that you were a good kid and all that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I have a question. You said uh, you filled out the citizen activity form. Yes, I just filled it out before the meeting, actually. And Ron is still on, although she's not in video. But I think she filled out a different form, so I'm a little confused. Where do you find the citizen uh, activity form? I got it on the town website. It's pretty um, clear there. You just click, how do I volunteer? And then it, um, and then it pops up as an option. Okay, Ron, are you still here? She's in the list of participants, but uh, I'll email her and um, and say um, make sure she's filled out the right form because I know she's interested also. All right, anything else on this? No. Okay. Um, I think that's all we have. So we can do a quick check around. What do you think of the meeting? Anything else we're missing? We just looked at the agenda one more time. I, think. Not I feel like there was something else. Well, new tree inventory, but that's uh, and statewide efforts, but those aren't really happening for us. So let's just table that. Any other comments or issues not anticipated? Sure, this isn't really an issue. I just wanted to comment. I know we had a tree down on our street, or not a tree, it was just a limb um across our street in a tree up the road and the prompt response from alan and his crew to make sure everything was done it was done right done well and i just want to say thank you for that there's definitely a lot of good work that's been 
um, going into prepping for incidents like that windstorm. And I, I think everybody notices it. I know some of my neighbors even commented, wow, that got cleaned up quick. So we really appreciate it. Thank you for that. That's good to hear. Appreciate it. Other comments? All right, so let's uh, adjourn the meeting and uh, let's respond to Bennett and Sarah's emails with the projects they're working on and <laughs> respond to the minutes when I get them out to you. And uh, yeah, we'll, Alan and I will talk and we'll make further plans for the nursery and see if we can get it for that second Saturday date. Sounds I, good. I wasn't able to unmute for a second there, but I, I wanted to thank uh, Sarah for and the whole group for putting so much thought into this significant tree ordinance because amen i just happened to have a neighbor who just went roaring through the trees around his place and you know not that he didn't ask if he could and i don't know how significant they were but i just think it's really really important at this point in our history to make trees have a high profile in terms of their value so this is a good thing. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. That's great. All right, thank you everyone. And uh, we'll be in touch by email and then we'll see you next month. Have a good evening, everyone. Right. Bye everybody. Bye. Hey,